Moving on now to the grain market. On Wednesday, the U.S. Department of Agriculture released the latest World Agricultural Supply and Demand Estimates, or the WASDE report. That report was accompanied by a report of December 1st grain stocks and NASA's report of winter wheat seedings. To break down the report numbers and the market's reaction, we were joined by Jeff Peterson, who's the president of Heartland Farm Partners. You know, there's a few things that really stood out to us. If we were to just look at it big picture, Bryce, what we'd say is that the numbers actually probably from the U.S. side were probably a little bit negative, but not so negative to put a lot of pressure on the market. But as we looked out to the world numbers, I would say, and we'll dig deeper into this, overall the world numbers were actually a little bit supportive overall. And so now what we do is we get past the report and now we're back to trading a weather market again. We'll trade in the South American weather. Well, let's dive into some of those numbers specifically. It's surprises for corn. Yeah, as we dig into the corn number, a couple things that do stand out. I mean, we came in with a bigger ending stock number. You know, not a lot. 1.54 billion is, is what we came at. Trade was expecting 1.485 billion. You know, we ended up seeing on the, on the corn side, um, overall yield was unchanged. We did see an adjustment on the harvested acres. They brought those up. But a couple things that stand out that I think are going to have to be adjusted down the road fall into the demand side. We ended up seeing an increase in demand on the ethanol. They brought that up 75 million. But the thing that really surprised us is that they brought the corn exports down 75 million bushels. All of our calculations so far would suggest not only are we ahead of pace to hit what would have been the number in December, but we, we probably, you know, we're for sure going to hit the number they had. So I think down the road we'll end up having to see a couple things happen. We'll have to see ethanol come up more, and I think we'll also have to see that export number reversed and actually taken higher, which down the road means we should see some lower ending stocks yet. So that's the corn side of things. What about for soybeans, Jeff? You know, on soybeans, there really wasn't much for adjustments. You know, they ended up tweaking uh, and brought the ending stocks up to 350 from 340. The trade was looking for a 349, so not much of a change there. We did see an increase in the yield, a couple tenths, but really not much. So really, honestly, on the U.S. soybean side, really not anything for surprises there. So that was obviously one of the big drivers of the week here so far as we have this conversation. How did the markets react to all this information? You know, initially it was really interesting when we came out at one point, uh, take soybeans for instance, at one point soybeans were down 20 and then they ended up being at one point up 10. So overall, I would say they, they digested everything there and now we're back to trading weather. And on the corn side, we saw that two-sided trade back and forth also on the corn side. Saw a little more weakness coming from the wheat side, but you know, overall now we're focused on the weather and what's going on there again. February 9th, that's the next WASD report. We're obviously looking at the weather situation, but factoring that as we get ready for the next one. Anything in particular you're going to be keeping a close eye on as we do? I know we're talking about the current one now, but as we get closer to the next one? Yeah, a lot of things we got our eye on. I mean, now that we've got the U.S. production behind us, we're kind of honing in on where the demand numbers are running. We now have to keep a very close eye on how does this crop end up finishing, you know, in South America. And we're going to be in particular watching Rio Grande de Sol, Paraná, southern parts of Mato Grosso, also Paraguay, Uruguay, even though they're not big producers, but the big focus has to be on Argentina. And as we take a look at Argentina, one of the things that's a little concerning for us here is the fact that they've had probably 10, even maybe 12 days of degrees that have been over 100 degrees on the temperature side. They've been dry. We've got some moisture coming in to us that can help, but we're watching very closely. What does that forecast look like about 15 days out? Because as we go down the road, a few things that we think we're going to end up seeing, Bryce, is that even though there were some adjustments on and, you know, and more with it than the trade expected on corn and soybeans for South America, we are expecting some bigger adjustments down the road. Part of our reason behind that is that we dig into those crop condition scores uh, this last week. I haven't seen the update this week for the Buenos Aires Grain Exchange, but you know they were sitting there at a 40% good to excellent on corn. A month ago, that was over 90%. And with the temperatures we've had this week, we think that very well could be down to 25%. So, so that's kind of some of the areas that we're watching going forward. And remind us, I know it's a big geographic area we talk about when we mentioned South America, but where are they at in the growing season and even harvest season now? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So up in you know, in Mato Grosso, the very northern part of, of really of Brazil, you know, harvest is getting and going, just moving along ever so slowly. We're going to have to continue watch along up there because we'll see how the wet conditions are hampering that harvest. You've still got other areas, though, that, you know, haven't all the way got through pod fill yet, and you've also got other areas that haven't got all the way this in through silking yet as we move our way all the way down into Argentina. So you've got a full range there yet. 
Back here in the U.S., where are we heading with these markets, Jeff? Have you got your crystal ball with you today? Yeah, I think what we're going to end up seeing is that as we dig in and take a look at the weather, um, we do have some weather systems coming through for Argentina here. Going to pick up some drier or wetter conditions actually coming in probably Sunday, Monday, Tuesday type time frame. But they've got some additional t high temperatures, over 100, 100 to 105 leading up to that. The whole key to it, as we come into Saturday night trade, and Sunday night trade actually in the Sunday night trade is going to be what do we ultimately end up seeing for the weather forecast, how much rain actually ended up falling. I, I think we've still got some little bit higher prices to go forward here yet, but I think this is the type of area where you have to get your get ready to start making some sales uh, on the old crop and the new crop side because we know these weather markets will turn fast. Jeff, appreciate your time as always. You bet. Thank you very much.